Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 11th Circa Online Learning and Virtual Engagement Webinar, or SOL for short. This SOL webinar series is Circa's immediate response to the emerging impacts of the COVID-19 global pandemic on food security by maximizing the use of information and communication technology platforms to inform, to educate, and share evidence-based solutions and tested technologies, as well as best practices on the ground. My name is Kim Bantayan, and I'm a program specialist of Circus Training for Development Unit of the Education and Collective Learning Department. The short video shown earlier has given you a glimpse about Circa and what we do. But if I may add, Circa is hosted by the Philippine government on the campus of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Laguna. We, so we are coming to you live from the special science and nature city of the Philippines. Our last SOLVE webinar series focused on solving emerging diseases through the One Health, Eco Health approach. Today's webinar and for the rest of the month of July, our SOLVE webinar series will carry the theme Agriculture Value Chains, Financing and Investments. So our online conversation this morning, we'll talk about financial literacy. According to one famous economist, he said that one, the number one problem in today's generation in, and economy is lack of financial literacy. So before we proceed uh, with our online conversation, uh, we would like to go over some very interesting statistics gathered from SOAP webinar held last week uh, July 8, 2020. The infograph shows that 61% of our online viewers were female and the rest were male. So this has been the consistent trend over the past 10 SOAP webinars that we've had where women consistently uh, dominated our online attendees. The infograph also indicates that more than uh, 300 individuals tuned in via Zoom, while more than 400 viewed the webinar through Circa's Facebook page. And lastly, we are happy to note that we've had online attendees not only from the Philippines, but also from Nigeria, Indonesia, Thailand, the United States, United, United Arab Emirates, Vietnam, and Singapore. This shows the number of individuals and countries that Circa's webinar has reached so far. We are trying our best to be able to reach as many individu individuals, farmers, and farming communities as possible through this online platform and really make a difference in the lives of our stakeholders, especially in this COVID-19 era. Now, going back to today's webinar, after my introduction and a few housekeeping points, our lone speaker, Mr. Joselito G. Florendo, will be will present the topic on wise investments and savings for entrepreneurs or wise. Financial literacy made easy. The question and answer session follows right after his presentation. Before we begin with the webinar, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. During the presentations, we invite all of you to send in your questions via the comments section if you are watching us through Circa's Facebook page. If you are registered and tuned in via Zoom, please post your questions or comments in the Q&A section that you see at the bottom or top of your screen, depending on the gadget you are using. We will collate the questions and once we are in the Q&A session, our speaker, Mr. Florendo, will address them in the time remaining. May we request you to kindly indicate your location and our country of origin now. So it would be good for us to know where you are watching this webinar. We also encourage you to please like Circa's Facebook page by pressing the little thumbs up sign just below the cover photo for us to remain socially connected. By liking our FB page, you will regularly receive updates on our learning events, webinars and postings on recent developments in agricultural and rural development. We would also like you, to, uh, we would also like to request everyone to share this webinar to your friends and colleagues or network. So use uh, the hashtag CircaSolve in your posts. 
Please note that today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available on Circa's Facebook page and YouTube channel. You may also subscribe to Circa's YouTube channel. Today's presentation will also be made available on Circa's website at www.circa.org. The slides shown during the past webinars have already been posted on our website. If you have issues or experiencing technical difficulties with the Zoom online platform, please email my colleagues at solve at circa.org. Moving on to our webinar this morning, our speaker for this online discussion is no less than the Deputy Director for Administration of Circa and Associate Professor at the University of the Philippines Diliman Cesar E.A. Verata School of Business. He is the former Vice President for Planning and Finance of the University of the Philippines System and Chair of the Department of Accounting and Finance at the Virata School of Business. Mr. Florendo, or D.D. Joe, as we fondly call him at Circa, finished his international master's in small and medium enterprises at the Asia Europe Institute of the University of Malaya, Malaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia with distinction. He obtained his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Accountancy, cum laude, at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and he ranked 15th in the May 1994 Certified Public Accountants Licensure Examination. He was chosen as the 2014 to 2015 Deloitte Phoenix Most Outstanding Finance Educator of the Philippines. He received the 2016 Dangal ng Bayan Award from President Rodrigo Duterte during the Outstanding Government Workers Awards Rights held on 19 December 2016 at the Malacanang Palace. Without further ado, here to talk about wise investments and savings for entrepreneurs, financial literacy made easy. Please welcome Mr. Jose Florendo. Hi, good morning, everyone. And thank you for uh, tuning in to the 11th session of CIRCA's SOLVE seminar. So SOLVE once again stands for CIRCA's Online and Virtual Engagement Seminar. So to all the people around the world, good morning. During the past 10 sessions of CIRCA, we have been talking about various topics like home gardening made easy. We talked about championing school plus home garden. We talk about open systems, agriculture, mechanization. And just last week, we talked about a solving emerging diseases through the EcoHealth and One Health approach. But now I think it's time to talk about money because you know, one of the most important things at the end of the day is to watch cash flow. So please join me as we spend around one hour in talking about what matters most, and that is cash flow. Kim forgot to tell you that towards the end of the seminar, there will be a 10 item quiz. So in the meantime, you might want to get a piece of paper, okay, and a pen. It's a 10 item quiz, uh, answerable by yes or no. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the seminar and uh, please, uh, please write your questions uh, at the chat box. Next slide, please. So my name is Joe Florendo and I'm the deputy director of CIRCA and the title for today's seminar is Wise Investments and Savings for Entrepreneurs, Financial Literacy Made Easy. One of my favorite slogans is as follows. Next slide, please. And it's called, It's More Fun to Be in the Philippines. You know, this was one of the slogans that we used in our tourism campaign. It's more fun in the Philippines because, you know, in the past five years, the gross domestic product of the Philippines was steadily increasing but not only the Philippines, other ASEAN countries as well. The next slide would show the performance of GDP or gross domestic product among 11 countries. So let's take a look at this slide. And my source for this is the Asian Development Bank. As you can see, let's focus on the last three years. Most of the ASEAN countries have experienced positive growth rates. And if we look closely, Myanmar, the Philippines and Vietnam have performed very well. And let's include to that list, Cambodia. You know, these rates are the envy of a lot of countries around the world. So what we can say that 
during the past five weeks, it was really more fun not only to be in the Philippines, but in also other ASEAN countries. Now, let me share with you what made the Philippine economy tick during the past several years. I would just like to inform you that one of the things that is making our gross domestic product going up is uh, the amount of remittances from our overseas foreign workers. Last check, do you know that last year we gathered around 32.5 US dollars from the remittances from our overseas foreign workers? You know, everywhere, everywhere around the world that I go to, I notice that I often see Filipinos. And, I th and that's one of the reasons uh, why our economy is going up. The second reason why the Philippine economy is going up is because of the revenues that we generate from the IT or the business processing outsource uh, industry. So last year, we got around 25 billion US dollars from this sector. The third reason why the Philippine economy is moving is because of tourism. So last year was a banner year. We got around 8.9 million tourists. Uh, we still have to catch up with our neighbors, but that was one of the uh, highest uh, number of tourists that we got in the Philippines. And we got around $9 billion from the tourism sector. The next reason why the Philippine economy grew at an outstanding pace during the five years is because of investments, both from the government and the private sector. And as you all know, our president has a slogan and it's called build, build, build. And it's reflected in our economic figures. And lastly, the reason why the Philippine economy is moving is because of the favorable demographics. The next slide will show the profile of the population among 11 ASEAN countries. What will we notice? Let's take a look at Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Timor-Leste, and Vietnam. And you will notice that a large portion are below 15 to 64 years old. And that is one of the reasons why these economies are moving forward. If these people are productive, then it contributes to the economy. Before we move on to the next slide, please take a look at the Philippines. Around 94% are below 64 years old. And I think most of us here are within that range bracket. So that's one of the reasons why our GDP is going up. But if we focus on the preceding slide, you will notice that a lot of them are now in question. The amount of remittances, the amount of revenues from IT BPO sector, tourism uh, inflows are now in question because of what happened, the pandemic. So now more than ever, it is time to talk about managing cash flow. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or the Central Bank of the Philippines, conducted a consumer finance survey in 2014. Uh, they have another survey in 2018, but the results are uh, still to be released. So in 2014, our central bank, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, conducted a consumer finance survey where they interviewed 18,000 households in the Philippines. 62.5% of the respondents were female. 84.60 of them were in the working age bracket of 21 to 64, and 46.40% were either in high school or college graduates. Are you ready for the results? Here are the results. The 2014 BSP Consumer Finance Survey found out that 86% of Filipino households have no bank accounts. That means only 14% of those surveyed had bank accounts. When the 86% were asked, why don't you have a bank account? This was their reason. The reason was that they did not have enough money to deposit in banks. So this just goes to show us how the Philippines ranks in comparison with other ASEAN countries. And I got this from the global FINDEX database of 2017. So who were surveyed? Older adults aged 25, and these bars are in percentage. How many of them have an account at a financial institution? 
As you will see, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand have performed quite well. But let's take a look at Cambodia, Laos, and the Philippines, and Vietnam. It seems that it mirrors the results of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, which point out that not all or not, not a lot have bank accounts in the Philippines. So is it really because we don't have any money to deposit in the bank? Or is it something else? Let's move on to the next slide. Another result of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas is the income versus expenditure patterns of Filipino households. It was discovered in this study that 61% spent as much as their income. So these are people who are having difficulty saving money. 33 spent more than their income. So that just goes to show probably they borrowed money or are in debt. And only 6% spent less than their income. And it is these people who save and invest. So there seems to be a problem. Some people are spending either as much as their income or spending more than their income. Do we really have no money to deposit in the bank? Or is it simply because we have bad spending habits? You know, in 2013, The Economist magazine, I was reading The Economist magazine, and you know, I found this article in uh, 2013, and uh, it pointed out that Filipinos had one of the highest consumption of gin and rum in 2012. 180 million liters of gin, or approximately 1.4 liters per person per year, and approximately the same for rum was consumed by Filipinos in 2012. So let me go back to my question. Do we really have no money to spend or probably we have bad spending habits? This is another result, but this came from the 2012 BSP Consumer Finance Survey, which gives us an idea of how Filipinos use surplus money. What's the result? The result is that 18.70%, um, let me just go, 38% uh, would save cash at home. They would rather keep their excess cash under the pillow or inside the closet. Another, 43.30% of those who have surplus money would save money in the banks. Okay, and others, a small percentage, these are the people who invest. So that just goes to show the profile of the consumers in the Philippines way back in 2012. Now, how do Filipinos, uh, what do you call, uh, what's the profile in using debits and credit cards? Okay, let's go here. The Philippines, the one in blue indicates the usage of debit cards and the one in uh, yellow or orange is the usage of credit cards. So as you can see, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand, the usage of debits and credit cards are way ahead of their ASEAN counterparts. But you know, as I will point out later, the use of credit or debit cards, especially credit cards, might not, that, might not be that bad, okay? Especially during crisis like this, okay? So I will discuss that later. But can you go to the previous slide? Okay. So as you can see, uh, still, I think a lot of Filipinos are afraid to use the credit cards, okay? Uh, and I think a lot of merchants do not, they prefer cash, okay, rather than the plastic. But as you can see, Malaysia, Singapore, and Thailand, there's a wide usage of credit cards in their countries. So how do Filipinos, uh, okay, use digital platforms for payments? As you can see, the results of the previous slide are mirrored here. Once again, those who use it quite well are Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. The Philippines is way down there, 46%, the use of digital platforms for payments. The average in Southeast Asia is 61%, the one on the left. And the Philippines right now is uh, uh, registering 46%. And what are the top reasons for increase in cashless payment usage? Well, because it's more convenient. It's hassle-free. It's widely accepted. 
and people feel more comfortable using these cards rather than carrying tons of cash in the merchant's area. Now, how do, how do Filipinos pay their credit card bills? Let's take a look at the green portion. 39% of those surveyed paid their credit card monthly bills in full, okay? Let's take a look at the blue one. 40% paid only the minimum. And when you pay the minimum amount of your credit card bill, you will incur interest, and that can be quite heavy or burdensome. So we see that around 40% are paying interest on their credit card bills. Let's take a look at the uh, orange one. 5% uh, paid a partial amount other than the minimum. Oh my gosh, we have the red portion. They did not pay at all, okay? And 15% did not specify whether they paid their credit card bills or not. But just that just goes to, just gives us an idea of how uh, consumers in the Philippines uh, behave. How do we perform in terms of payment of loans? So as we can see here, good news, 63.9% of those surveyed paid these loans on schedule, 34.3 were behind schedule, and a small portion uh, paid their loans on schedule. Now, why do we have to talk about money? Do you know that you make at least three financial decisions every day without you knowing it? So make it a point to talk about money. Do not be ashamed to talk about money to your friends and to your relatives and to office workers. Why do we have to talk about money? Because there are several major expenditures in life that we have to be prepared for. And one of them is education. So if you're studying right now, we need cash flow to be able to complete our education, virtual or actual. Second, some of us want to get married and this can be quite expensive, okay? So, uh, but I think it's getting to be more, it's getting to be cheaper because right now I think weddings are conducted virtually. But this is one of the expense uh, that we should be prepared for. Having our own, own house or own home is also one of the major expenditures in life that we should be prepared for. And that's why we have to talk about money. That's why we have to talk about savings and investments. Number four, some of us want to have a car, but I think nowadays what matters more is a motorcycle, a bicycle, or an e-bike. You know, after the lockdown here in Laguna, Philippines, you know, after the lockdown, uh, I, I went to a nearby town, it's called Calamba, and I noticed that the shops selling motorcycles, e-bikes, bicycles, they were full because the Filipinos were looking for an alternative mode of public transportation. So you can change car to motorcycle or to e-bike. Okay. Number five, some of, us, some of us do want to have children. And this is one of the things that we should prepare for. And that is why we have to talk about money. Number six, why do we have to talk about money? Well, because there are emergencies in life. Let me share with you a personal experience that I had in 2014. You know, in 2014, I had this major surgery wherein I ha they had to take away my bladder, okay? And it was a very, very, very expensive procedure. Good to know that I had insurance back then. So insurance is very, very important uh, in one's life. So we should talk about money, we should talk about insurance to help us just in case of emergencies. You know, all work and no play makes Joe a dull boy. So sometimes we, can, we should go to a vacation and these are things that we have to look out for. Not in the near future, probably, we hope next year, okay? Number eight, job loss, okay? And uh, I think some of us have uh, experienced this right now. And that is why uh, we should manage whatever cash we have right now especially if we uh, lost our job. Nine, all of us should prepare for retirement, okay? We want something with us when we retire because uh, we're going to live beyond retirement. And that is why 
we have to have some amount of money to draw from to enjoy our retirement years. And finally, we also have to prepare for death, okay? Uh, we should leave a certain amount to the people that we will leave behind. And this is why I want to emphasize that we have to talk about money. We have to talk about cash flow in general. So let me now go to Joe's concepts in savings. There are 10 of these, and I would like to share them with you. And this is based on personal experience. Number one, count and measure, because you cannot manage what you cannot measure. I'm an accountant by profession. I will just share with you three reports that you may be able to use for your business and personal life. The three reports are the balance sheet, the income statement, but my favorite is the statement of cash flows. This took me five years to study in college. Let's try to do it in five minutes. The first financial report is called the balance sheet. If you haven't prepared this before, why don't you start preparing one? And it will help you in the road to financial fitness. Next slide. So let's talk about the balance sheet. You know, the reason why this is called the balance sheet is because there's an equation behind it. It's assets equals liabilities plus equity. I know to some of you it may sound technical, but let me explain. What you have on the left side are assets, what you own. What you have on the right side is where it came from. It was either borrowed or your share, which is called equity. If you haven't done this report in the past, may I suggest that you start doing so. What should you list down? Try listing down your personal or your business's cash. You should know where your cash is. Are they in savings account? Are they on hand? Are they in time deposits? And so forth and so on. Try to determine also the amount of receivables that you have. What are receivables? They are amounts collectible from customers or other persons. Try to list it down so that you will see the amount of assets that you have. And let me share with you my 11th commandment. When it comes to receivables, always collect as soon as possible, especially from friends and relatives. Okay? So make it a point to always take a look at your receivables and collect them as soon as you can. Third, if you are currently selling goods, you know, one business which is very popular nowadays is the sale of food, you know, uh, online ordering of food. I see them everywhere. If you sell food, if you sell face masks, if you sell face shields, then you have what we call as accountants inventories. Okay? And when you see a substantial amount of inventories on your balance sheet, make it a point that you turn over it as quickly as possible especially if your inventories are perishable like vegetables or fruits because your money is tied up in it so the challenge is to quickly convert it into cash once again what do we do with receivables collect as soon as you can what do we do with inventories sell them as quickly as you can one asset also that you might want to list down personally or for your business is the amount of fixed assets. Fixed assets could be the car, the motorcycle, computers, furniture. List it down so that you know the amount of assets that you have. And please bear in mind that these assets should somehow help you generate cash. So if you have a computer or a gadget, maybe we can make cash out of this, okay? By having an online ordering system and so forth and so on. If we have a motorcycle, maybe we can generate cash out of this, you know, by having delivery services on hand. As you list down your assets, please don't, do not forget that you also have liabilities, okay? And they are called payables. They are payables to your suppliers and to people that you owe money. And whatever is left is called equity. 
okay, or the share of the owner in the business. Why am I encouraging you to prepare the balance sheet so that you know the amount of assets that you have, so that you know the amount of receivables, so that it will alert you to convert it into cash, so that you know the amount of inventories that you have, so that you can quickly convert it to, uh, and so for you to know also the amount of debt that you have. So this is the balance sheet. And if you haven't prepared this before, why don't you give it a try? The next thing that accountants can share with you in the road to financial fitness is the income statement. Okay, okay. And the income statement starts with the word revenues or sales, okay? Now, every business has its revenues or sales, but what you should not forget is to deduct from your revenues and sales all expenses related in generating those revenues. So if you have a business that sells goods, you should first deduct what we call as accountants as cost of goods sold. But please do not forget to deduct other expenses in generating those revenues, salaries, communication, transportation, utilities. There's an expense called depreciation and interest expenses do not forget you should deduct interest expenses interest expenses is the cost of borrowing money accountants will tell you that if revenues or sales exceed expenses a firm has net income but if expenses exceed revenues a firm will have net loss can this be applied on a personal basis my answer is yes why don't you put on top your salary per month, okay? And list down your expenses at the end of each month. List it down, okay? What portion of my salary goes to food? What goes to utilities? What goes to transportation? What goes to milk tea, <laughs> okay? And what goes to other expenses? And it will give you an idea whether your salaries are greater or lower than your expenses per month. You know, why don't you also start the habit of listing down your expenses every month? Because in doing so, my concept number two will appear. In so doing, we will know whether it's time to increase our income. And number three, you will know whether it's time to reduce unnecessary expenses. I have something to share with you. You know, sometime in 2013, you know, I bought a cup of coffee, the biggest cup of coffee, it's cafe latte with two brown sugar from a popular coffee shop every day of that year in 2013. And back then it was 135 pesos. So I bought that coffee every day from that popular coffee shop, 135 pesos. And when I listed down all my expenses for that year, it turned out that I spent the most for coffee, for that specific coffee. It was even greater than the amount of groceries that I spent that year. It was greater than the utilities that I paid for that year. And that alerted me that this type of expense might be avoidable or unnecessary. I am proud to say that I replaced that cup of coffee with a sachet coffee, okay, which I drink every day. So I was able to replace 135 per day with a sachet worth seven pesos, okay? So that is why if you haven't done so, maybe it's nice from now on to list down your expenses and match it with your salary. Uh, to the entrepreneurs there, I would like to share with you something. If your business has a net income, that means revenues exceed expenses. You know one way of saying that? My bottom line is black, okay? But what if you have a net loss? Well, one way to say that is my bottom line is red, okay? So if you have a net income, what's your bottom line? It's in the black. But what if you have a net loss? It's in the red. Okay, and that's widely used in the business circles. 
So far, my concepts in savings and investment pointed out to count and measure, increase income, and reduce expenses. You will only be able to do this if you start listing down your assets, your revenues, and expenses. But I would like to share with you the importance of watching cash flows. There's a report which is prepared by accountants, but which you can also apply on a personal basis. What is the cash flow statement? You list down there where your cash came from and where it went to. You list down your inflows and outflows of cash. And this is usually done, uh, you can do it every week, you can do it every month for you to be able to manage your cash flow well. I will now be reading a poem to emphasize the importance of managing cash in your daily lives. The title of this poem is Cove the Banker, Watch Cash Flow. You know, this poem was created way back in 1975, but the message is relevant up to this time. And I think it's very, very re relevant during a time of crisis. Kof the Banker Watch Cash Flow is a parody of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. It sounds and looks a lot like Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. So why don't we read it together? You read it silently and I will read also the point. Kof the Banker Watch Cash Flow. Once upon a midnight dreary, as I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of accounting lore, seeking gimmicks to squeeze through some new tax loophole, suddenly I heard a knock upon my door, only this and nothing more. Then I felt a queasy tingling as I heard the cash a jingling, as a fearsome banker entered whom I'd often seen before. His face was money green and in his eyes there could be seen dollar signs that seemed to glitter as he reckoned up the score. Cash flow, the banker said, and nothing more. I had always thought it fine to show a jet black bottom line. Some entrepreneurs, some individuals, they believe that as long as their revenues exceed expenses, they have a jet black bottom line, life is okay. But the banker says, no. The banker sounded the resounding no. Your receivables are high, mounting upward towards the sky. Right off loom, what matters is cash flow. He repeated, watch cash flow. Once again, I am emphasizing the importance of collecting your receivables as soon as you can to contribute to cash flows. Then I tried to tell the story of our lovely inventory which though large is full of most delightful stuff. But the banker saw its growth and with a mighty oath, he waved his arms and shouted, stop, enough, pay the interest and give, don't give me any cut. To the entrepreneurs listening out there, watch your inventories as well. And as I told you earlier, let us try to generate cash from the inventories as soon as possible. And the final message of this poem, which you can see in Google, just, co uh, just uh, write down, Cove the Banker, Watch Cash Flow. And once again, this was created in 1975, but still relevant for these times. Though your bottom line is black, though you have a net income, though your revenues and expenses, uh, though your revenues are greater than your expenses, do you know that it's possible that you will be flat upon your back? Cash flows out, customers pay slow, the growth of receivables is almost unbelievable, unremitting woe. Let us not forget the banker when he utters in an ominous low mutter, always watch your cash flow. And that's my fourth concept. Watch cash flow, not, during or, uh, not only during ordinary times, but it is very important during the times that we are living in. Always watch your cash flow. Number five. The, number, the fifth concept in saving is make it a habit that before you buy anything, define your needs and wants. So, uh, you know, today, one of the 
uh, biggest online sellers is having a sale in the Philippines. Okay, so I think a lot of people will be tempted to buy stuff uh, from this online seller. But before you buy stuff, okay, yeah, can I just uh, segue for a while? Uh, also, some people they are always tempted when they see the color red, okay. And inside the color red are four letters, S-A-L-E, okay? So there are some, it gives them uh, a kind of sense that they have to go in and buy. But from now on, before you buy a thing, always ask yourself, is this a need or a want? And once you do this, especially for expensive products, you will learn that uh, you will realize that some of the things that you see right away may not really be a need. And so every time I go to a coffee shop now, before buying that expensive coffee, I always ask myself, is it really a need or a want? Okay. And I always end up just leaving the coffee shop because I have my sachet inside my pocket. Okay. So the main message is, uh, before you buy something, especially if it's expensive, try to distinguish whether it's a need or a want. Number six, some people are afraid of credits or using credits or debit cards. I say, uh, no, I, I, I don't think they're bad, okay? You just have to have that discipline in paying the amount you owe given the due date, okay? Because right now, especially during these times, credit cards can be very, very helpful and be very very convenient okay it's not that bad okay as long as you have the discipline to uh pay your juice uh at the due date number seven start saving early to the students out there who are listening to this seminar try allocating a portion of your allowance and putting it in a savings bank account start the discipline early because it's really really hard to increase your money okay uh over the years number eight this is very important know the concepts of risk and return if you will invest money out there there are a lot of people who will offer you investment products and some of the returns that they are promising might be too hard to believe okay uh, always bear in mind that behind an offer of a great return, there is a risk associated with it. So do not forget, if there's a return, there is always a risk. Okay. Number nine, do not keep all your eggs in one basket. If you have excess cash to invest, maybe you put a portion of it in a time deposit or a savings account to help you during times of need, put a certain portion in government securities, put a certain portion in other investments. And lastly, a sincere wish, let us not be greedy because sometimes people offer us humongous returns, not knowing that there are risks associated with it. So if you have excess cash, what are your alternatives? Well, the first alternative is or are time deposits, but you see, the returns on time deposits are quite low. Last check, they are, last check, if I place my money in a time deposit with banks, I don't think it will even earn 1% per annum, okay? So, but if you want liquidity, that means you can withdraw it at your pleasure, then the time deposit is in. But let me mention another instrument that you can invest in if you have excess cash, for investment, and they are called government securities. These are uh, investment products offered by the national governments. Uh, in effect, the national government is borrowing from the public. Since the national government owes us money, we are sh more or less sure that they will pay the money they owe us. That's why government securities are what we call relatively risk-free uh, investments. To my uh, to my brothers and sisters in the Philippines, I would like to inform you that the government will be uh, issuing uh, retail treasury bonds in the coming weeks. 
I understand it's around uh, for five years. And last check, it's around 2.35% per annum. So that's an example of a government security uh, issued by the government through the Bureau of the Nash, uh, Bureau of the Treasury. Third, uh, if you want higher returns, the promise of higher returns, then you should have, uh, you should take on more risks, okay? And it's called now bonds, okay? The specific word here is corporate bonds, okay? Uh, what are these? These are instruments issued by corporations, big corporations. These big corporations are in effect borrowing from the public they generally have higher return compared to government securities, but they also carry with them a higher risk. So my classic example for this is the Bank of the Philippine Islands. The Bank of the Philippine Islands will be issuing what they call COVID care uh, bonds, okay, to help the small and medium enterprises in the Philippines. And I hope I don't make a mistake. I think it's at least 3% per annum for five years. So if you're interested in these investment products, call your uh, nearest bank, okay? They will be able to offer government securities and bonds. And number four, which I consider the riskiest among all the investment products out there are investments in stocks. Uh, you have probably heard some of your friends talking about stocks okay that they have made so much money in the stocks in the recent months uh probably what they didn't tell you is that they lost from the stock market as well okay so they, they just tell you the good news but probably they refrain from sharing with you the bad news but this is a place where you can invest your excess cash but my strong suggestion is uh read thoroughly first about what the stock market is all about before venturing into it okay do not enter into it with little background yes it promises great returns but it also might result in high losses so these are the investments which are available out there where you can place excess cash but you see these things take too much time you know sometimes you have to be very very active every day to monitor the performance of uh, these instruments that's why my fifth suggestion is to uh, call your local bank and inquire about UITF which stands for unit investment trust funds most of the banks offer unit investment trust funds where instead of you actively investing you entrust to them your money and they will invest it uh, for you. That's what a unit trust fund is. One benefit of the UITF is you're entrusting your money to people who are professionals or who know about how to invest the money. So in effect, you're putting your trust to them for them to generate a return for your excess cash. These are the investments which are out there. Uh, but always please take note that whenever there is a promise of a high return, there are risks associated with it. The final thing I want to talk about is in your road to financial fitness, please avoid scams. And my classic example is Amman Futures. Way back in 2012, there was a firm in the Mindanao area of the Philippines named Amman Futures. Aman Futures promised investors a 40% increase in the money invested within one week. And Aman Futures promised double your money in two weeks. So a lot of people were tempted. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people invested in Aman Futures. To put a figure to the number of people who invested in Aman Futures, there were 15,000 Filipinos living in Mindanao and the Visayas who invested in Aman Futures. Do you know how much they invested? They invested a total of 295 million US dollars in Aman Futures. And the next day when they woke up, it was completely gone. 
once again, from now on, when someone offers you a high return, always consider that there is a risk associated with it. And this is one of the oldest scams in the world, and it's called the pyramiding scheme, wherein there's this individual, I colored him red, that means he's a bad person, and that person will recruit uh, people below him, and the people below him will continuously recruit, okay? Promising double your money in two weeks, double your money in one month, and so forth, and so on. This will continue until it becomes unsustainable. So if the people at the bottom of the pyramid cannot recruit anyone else, then this whole pyramid will collapse. And the biggest winner here is the person at the top. The biggest loser are the numerous persons at the bottom. These scams have moved online, okay? So once again, may I just advise you that if you are offered a great return, always consider that there are risks associated with it. It's so difficult to part with your hard-earned money, and that is why let us try to avoid scams as much as possible. Okay, it's now time for the quiz. I will ask you 10 questions, and after this, I will tell you whether you are financially fit or not. Don't worry. These questions are answerable by yes or no, and you just have to answer truthfully. I will not ask the results from you, okay? I will not ask the participants, what did you get? I will not even name you. But these are just questions which will assess whether at this point in time, you are financially fit or not. Just like a doctor, I will take a look at the symptoms, and at the end of this 10 item quiz, I will tell you your fitness in terms of uh, being uh, financially well. Okay, so I hope you have your uh, I hope you have your piece of paper with you and a pen. Don't worry, it's answerable by yes or no. I will be asking the questions in English, but I will also be translating it to Filipino as much as I can. Are you ready? Okay, let's start. Question number one. Do you set aside or save a portion of your income or allowance every month? Nagtatabi ka ba ng halaga sa iyong uh, allowance or income bawat buwan? Yes or no? Answer truthfully and no copying. Question number two. Do you know your monthly expenses? Do you know how much you spend every month? And do you know your, the classification of your expenses? Like how much goes to food, how much goes to transportation, how much goes to coffee, how much goes to milk tea? Alam mo ba kung magkano ang nagagastos mo bawat month? Yes or no? Question number three. Do you categorize your expenses? Well, this is in relation to number two. Just write it on a piece of paper, okay? And uh, just answer yes or no. Number four. I do not borrow a lot from friends and relatives. Is this statement applicable to you? If you do not borrow a lot from your friends and relatives, answer yes. If you do borrow a lot from your friends and relatives, answer no. Humihiram ba ako ng madalas mula sa aking mga kapamilya at kaibigan? If yes, answer oo. Okay? At kung hindi, answer no. <laughs> Question number five. Do you have your own balance sheet? Do you know the amount of assets that you have? Do you know the amount that people should be paying you? Do you know the amount of debt that you owe? Do you have your own balance sheet? Number six, do you have monthly budget for your allowance or your salary? Do you prepare at the start of the month where your cash or money will go to? Like this should go to food, this should go to communication, this should go to... Do you do a budget every month? 
Yes or no? Question number seven. Do you stay within your budget? Yes or no? Okay, I hope these questions are very interesting. Okay, I hope you don't get angry at me. Okay. Question number eight. Have you been in a financial literacy seminar like this before? Or have you read books about financial literacy on your road to financial fitness? Yes or no? Question number nine. Going to the shopping mall, which might be difficult nowadays, but before pandemic, going to the shopping mall or coffee shop more than once a week for recreation is too much. If you agree with that statement, that going to a shopping mall or a coffee shop more than once a week is too much, answer yes. If you don't think that is too much, it's just normal, then answer no. And finally, question number 10, do you have financial goals? Do you have dreams? Like if you are 25, you should be making your first million, 30. You have your own house, 35. You, you have children in a car. Do you have those financial goals with you right now? 55, I retire from work. Do you have those types of financial goals? Answer yes or no. Now it's time to score yourself. If you answered yes for every number, give yourself one point. And if you answered no, give yourself zero point. Do that for every number and total your score. I will now briefly turn you over to my colleague. His name is Jay, and he will be asking you to do something after totaling your score. Jay? We encourage everyone to go to this URL so that we can have a feel of how many, how, how, it, uh, how your total scores will be. So we wanted to get a feel of. Oh my God, one number nine. Okay. So keep it, uh, keep it coming. Okay, so I see it in front of me now, the results. But so far, oh, there you go. There are the results, okay. Is it seen on the screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, let's give about five minutes for you to encode your scores just to see our performance in relation to the other participants listening in this seminar. Okay, 60. Okay, so that just goes to show uh, the various results for this 10 item quiz. What I'm about to tell you is I will just assess your financial fitness for today, okay? It's how you answer the quiz, but this can change tomorrow. So, to those who got one to four, this is my message to you, okay? You have a road to travel, okay? It's because you might be spending more than what is necessary, or you could be borrowing a lot. So if you're spending more than necessary, may I advise you to always differentiate needs versus wants. In so doing, you may avoid some of the wants and avoid uh, resorting to them. But don't worry, that's your, that's your score today. It will change tomorrow, as long as you remember my 10 concepts in savings and investment. To those who got five to seven, you're on your way to your goal. But I think what's lacking is preparing a budget, sticking to it, okay? And developing plans, okay? I, I, I sense that there's also a bit of an issue with differentiating needs and wants and a bit of depth for those who gathered five to seven. But you're at the midpoint, that's okay. And finally, to those who got eight to 10, congratulations. My only message is that I hope you stay in that level, okay? And maintain the discipline of uh, 
maintaining needs versus wants and having a record of your daily expenses and the amount of assets and liabilities that you have. Please don't forget that those are your scores for today and they will change tomorrow. I have a few more slides left before I uh, entertain questions. To sum this all up, the reason why we have to talk about cash is because we ma have financial decisions every day without you knowing it. And the reason why talks like this occur is because by wisdom, a house is built. And through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, our rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. We try to learn, we try to educate ourselves so that in times of disaster, we will not wither. And in days of famine, we will enjoy plenty. The reason why we have to listen to talks like this is for us to be resilient, especially during these times of a pandemic. After this seminar, people might ask you, where have you been this morning? I give you three hashtags, and the first hashtag is love it. Kindly tell your friends and relatives that you loved listening to a financial literacy seminar. If you don't like that hashtag, may I propose another? Watch your cash flow. Let us not forget the banker. As he utters an ominous low mutter, watch cash flow. And lastly, please invite your friends and relatives to future sessions of SOLVE. We are CIRCA, the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Graduate Study and Research in Agriculture. And our banner word for the next five years is ATTAIN, Achieving Transformation Through Agricultural Innovation. Thank you very much for listening to this one hour seminar. Once again, my name is Joe Florendo. I'm from Circa. Maraming maraming salamat po at mabuhay po kayo lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Didi Joe. It was a very, very enlightening um, presentation. Thank you for the hashtags. And thank you also <laughs> for inviting everyone to, the next, to our future uh, webinars. Uh, you made it a lot easier for me. Anyway, so thank you so much for helping us, you know, realize our financial fitness or how financially stable or unstable we are through your interactive quiz. I think uh, we receive a lot of comments that they enjoy the interactive thank quiz. Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> and also thank you for sharing with us your 10 concepts of saving, uh, which is in essence or in summary, is just uh, telling us, you know, the importance of saving, you know, saving money for the future, uh, saving money for for uh, more or greater sense of freedom, you know? So now we go to the question and answer uh, session. Again, may I remind our online attendees this watching this webinar via Facebook and via Zoom to please type in, start typing in your questions. And uh, for those of you uh, watching us via Facebook Live, Type them in in the comment section. And for those of you watching us via Zoom, please post your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom or top of your screen, depending on the gadget you are using. So the first question is, um, you know what, Sergio, you already have an avid fan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. So I it says here from an her. avid okay. fan of Didi Joe. If you have multiple accounts, what is the best monitoring mechanism to ensure that the check you have issued will not bounce and avoid being penalized? Okay. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion who that person is, okay? <laughs> well, okay. All I can say is that we should have uh, an improved recording system, okay? And that can easily be achieved with a simple Excel file. But to those who want to discuss this further, there are apps available there which will help you monitor your finances. To the person who asked that question, I know who you are. <laughs> okay, it's just a recording, a recording system, and it can be as simple as having an Excel file with you. Okay, there's another um, yeah. question here. Don't forget, oh, yes. 
to update it every day, okay? So think like an accountant, especially if you have multiple accounts, okay? Okay, if, there's another. <laughs> if I would just like to share with you, you know, uh, okay, I do update my finances every day at the end of the day. I do. I want to know where my cash went to and where my cash came from. I do that every day. You know, when I go to the, when I leave the office and go back to the house, I list them all up. And I will not be able to sleep if I'm missing a single peso. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so I know that's a discipline which is very, very difficult to, to practice. But, you know, sometimes it works. You know when you're losing money or when some got it from you. Okay. Okay. If somebody got it from you, you need to collect. That's correct. That's okay. correct. <laughs> okay. So I there's another question here. And thank you for sharing that, uh, that tip about... Uh, listing down or writing down all your expenses uh, for the day. It may be tedious, a tedious process, but in the end, it, um, what it matters provides a lot God. of benefits. <laughs> what matters is God. Yeah. Okay, there's another question here from another anonymous attendee, maybe one of your avid fans. Do you encourage putting money in digital banks? Uh, like PayMaya or uh, Gcash, is that what be? Uh, well, if that is what is being asked, like uh, putting it in Gcash or PayMaya, well, my answer would be yes. Oh. You know why? Well, because during this time, this time where we are having a pandemic, you know, you can pay at the merchant stores without holding on to cash. Okay, you could just like. Uh, scan the QR system, uh, a contactless payment is what matters also during a time of pandemic. And let me just make uh, a plug for these digital banks, okay? Uh, sometimes they have promos, like you get your cash back, like if you spend 100 pesos, some of them will give you a cash back of 1%, 10%, or if you're lucky, some would even give back to you the 100%. Like rebates. That's correct. Also, you can pay your utility bills without leaving your house. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can, instead of lining up, okay, you can all do it at the convenience of your fingertips. So, is it wise to place your money at digital banks? If that's what the, the, the person is asking, my answer is a resounding yes. Okay. So, I think that a lot of us are doing that right now. Uh, paying through, uh, online, you know, paying, paying bills online, yes, using their money in digital banks. Um, there's one here that we would like to ask you from Ricky Mejia, because you mentioned about uh, government uh, securities. Uh, he's asking, what are other government securities in the Philippines, apart from those that you mentioned in your presentation? Well, first, there are treasury bills. These are relatively long, long, uh, short term. Okay. Uh, I think there are treasury bills that have a 90 day, 180 days, and 360 days. Okay. All of that, you can ask the bank if they have a supply. I hope Ricky is, is uh, I, I, I hope he's talking about his personal funds. But if you are interested in, government securities issued, uh, which is very, very hot right now, it's the forthcoming RTB, or the Retail Treasury Bonds. And this uh, invites uh, individuals, okay, to, to invest as low as 5,000 pesos. May I suggest that you call your local bank, but my best bet would be uh, the government bank called Land Bank of the Philippines. Okay? The government is encouraging uh, the Filipino people to invest. And that is why they are issuing retail treasury bonds to cater to the, uh, how do I say, uh, investors which have little amounts to invest in the meantime. Uh, I think if I got my information correctly, uh, the retail treasury bonds will be for five years and it carries around 2.305% per annum gross, okay? Okay, thank you for that but, information. But to invest in government securities because we know it is the government who owes us, okay? And 
uh, just in case you want to know, the Philippines has never reneged on its obligations. Okay, so that's why we have a good credit standing. So the government is expected to pay its due to, uh, to those who lent them money. Thank you, Kit. Okay, thank you, Didi Joe, for that uh, information. Uh, there's another question here from one of our Zoom online uh, attendees. How many percent should I allot for investments out of my total income? Okay, it depends. Okay, where are you in your financial fitness? If you're just about to start, okay, if you're just about to start, just ensure that all the essentials are covered by your salary or your allowance. Now, if you are now moving to the road of financial fitness, then why don't you do it slowly, okay? Let me challenge you with the 5% first, okay? So a lot, 5% of what you receive. When I'm talking about what you receive, it should be net of tax, okay? <laughs> not, not gross of tax. So why don't you start with 5%? Okay, and you know how to do that? Differentiate needs versus wants because in so doing, you will be uh, able to avoid some of the unnecessary expenses and that will contribute to the 5%, okay? Do that. Try it for three months and then move on. 7%, 10%, okay? Use, if this is your first time, start with saving first, okay? And then call me message me Joselito Florendo Facebook when it's time that you have chosen to invest okay I will give you another diagnosis okay but if this is uh, this is your you're just starting may I suggest that you start with a reasonable five percent of what you get okay thank you thank you Didi Joe uh, from one of our Facebook viewers um, Dr. Nova Ramos <laughs> Why is risk tolerance important? And how can I figure out what mine is? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I outlined several investment products earlier, like time deposit, government securities, corporate bonds, and stocks. Uh, before placing your money, you should determine how much risk you want to take, okay? So if you're a risk averse person, may I strongly suggest that you stick with the government securities, okay? But if you want to earn a bit more, may I direct you to the UITF, the Unit Investment Trust Fund, okay? Uh, because more or less, those funds are managed uh, by professionals. But if you are risk averse, thou shalt not enter into the stock market. Okay, because your blood pressure will rise and fall <laughs> at the stock market. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Um. <laughs> now, how will you know whether you're risk averse or a uh, uh, risk taker? Well, there's another 10 item quiz. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, we're running out of time, but there's another 10 item quiz to determine whether you're risk averse or. Okay. Uh, no, I like think that, that, that to, will... to Nova, answer this question. If you have 100 pesos, where will you put it? Buy food or place it in a lottery game? Okay, so if you will buy food, you're risk averse. If you will place a bet at the lottery, then you're a risk taker. So that's one of the questions that's asked to determine whether you're a risk taker or a risk averse. Okay. Okay. Um, another question from one of our Facebook viewers uh, from Dr. Maria Celeste Cat Habito Cades. Please comment on tithing and the widow's might. Uh, well, do you believe in tithing? Yes, because okay. I, I, I do. <laughs> okay, that's because I put scriptures in my lecture. That's yes. why. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, I, I, I serve as, uh, at the church, okay? Uh, I, my religion is I'm a Protestant, and we, we do are required to give right. our mm -hmm. But just to give you a story, there was one time when I was small and uh, misbehaved, 
I asked the pastor, Pastor, what is 10%? Is it 10% of gross or net? Okay? And you know what the pastor answered? Uh, my son, that's what he answered. You know, when you love the Lord, it doesn't matter. Okay? So, so my comment is, yes, I do. But at times, difficult. Okay? But I do. Okay? okay. But let me remind you, uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Okay. Yes, I totally agree. Okay. And uh, God cannot be outdone in generosity. That's right. Okay, so there's another here from uh, one of our Facebook viewers. Do you know an app which we can use to monitor our expenses? Yes, I have one right now. If you will okay. allow me to take a look at my phone. Uh, it's the <laughs> the name yes. of the app is quite interesting. It's called Money Lover. Money Lover. Yeah, Money Lover. Okay. It uh you can put there, you know, as you spend for something, you can put it there. Okay? And it categorizes your expenses according to food, uh, essentials, transportation and so forth and so on. So that at the end of the day, you will know where your money went to. It also has a feature where you can put the beginning balance of your cash so that you know mm -hmm the amount of cash that you have left. It's called Money Lover. And you know, at the end of the, I hope I'm not promoting it, but you know, <laughs> at the, end of the day when I see it, I, I notice where I spend too much or where I, the, the unnecessary expenses that I spent for. Okay, there's another question here. Uh, this one has been highlighted, which means that I really have to, to ask it. What type of retirement account should one have? If you are working, if you are working, I do hope that your firm has a provident fund, which means that they uh, withhold an amount from your salary and they contribute to that. Uh, and so that when you retire, uh, you have something with you. Okay? okay. So that's one. If you are working, uh, ask your firm or your office uh, the value of having a provident fund. Okay. Second, maybe a, maybe a life insurance will be good for you, okay? Uh, but this, this should be done as early as possible. Uh, uh, I mean, like, so that, you know, it should be done in your 20s. So that by the time you're finished with paying the premiums, you have something to uh, take care of. Okay, so really start uh, early. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. And... Uh, well, if you have excess cash and you really, really don't need it, may I suggest the government securities? Okay? Because uh, it pays good. So yeah. are looking at this right now, can you read about UITF, okay, which is offered by several banks? You know, UITF has a money market uh, product wherein the bank invests it in very, very liquid instruments you might want to try that out too okay once again uh provident fund investments in government securities life insurance and if you're a bit comfortable with it already uitf money market okay just stay there okay money market okay okay there's another question here from micaia micaia Bea or G. Gregorio, is a pyramid scheme different from a multi-level marketing business? If okay. so, what is the difference between the two? Okay. Multi-level and pyramiding scheme. Yeah. It is. Because a pyramiding scheme or a Ponzi scheme deals with money. Uh, it deals with investments. Mm -hmm. While a multi-level networking firm, they have products to sell. So there's a big difference. The, the pyramiding or the Ponzi, uh, the top guys ask you to recruit and to get money without selling any product or good. The, the multi-level, uh, there are products involved. There are goods that are sold. So I, I cannot say that they're the same. Now, whether the goods sold are of good quality or not is another question, but they're not the same. Okay, there's another here from uh, Dr. Maria Helen Dayo. Is it sound 
or is it wise to invest in a thing called Bitcoin? Okay. Uh, and, yeah. uh, let me continue. He read in uh, that Dominguez and Villar are into this type of investment. Please inform us about this Bitcoin. You know, uh, to be honest with you, uh, to be can you just check whether the, the Villar article is true or not? I, 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 uh, I'm not quite sure. But to be honest with you, I haven't studied it. And I'm not interested, okay? Because uh, I, I feel, I still feel that it's something new and there is much more to be learned out of it. So I'm taking a risk averse position when it comes to Bitcoins and uh, cryptocurrencies. It has been asked of me several times, but I, I, I'm really hesitant to look at it thoroughly because there might be a problem about liquidity. Like when I need the money, it might not be available. Okay. So I'm so sorry. I, I haven't studied it quite well. So, but my attitude is I'm skeptical about. Okay, from Mr. Alexander Morados, what is the difference between being financially fit and financially literate? Ah, okay, financially literate is that you know the concepts. Financially fit is that if you apply it in your life. <laughs> okay, so... Um, you might have heard needs and wants, but if you still keep on buying that expensive coffee, then you're not financially fit. <laughs> okay, so from another anonymous attendee, do you know what framework was used by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas for their distinction between banked and unbanked individuals or households? Okay, uh, in one of my slides, it showed there the profile of the household survey. I think the question is coming from a statistician, I'm so sorry, uh, but they surveyed 18,000 households and the, those in the working age bracket, most were women, so I guess the assumption is that the women hold the purse, but they simply ask whether you have a bank account or not in coming up with that result. Oh, okay. For, for the information, everyone, that was the result in 2014. There's an updated uh, study, but it's not a consumer finance survey. It has already improved. Uh, it has improved to around, uh, it, it has already improved. But this is the, there's another survey, it's 2018. The results are yet to be released. So all I can say is that this is the portion if, if this partially the answers the question, what is the framework, this is what I can say. And that the next question, the respondents were asked whether they simply have a bank or a bank. Um, next question, sir. If I have 50,000, what is the best investment for it in agriculture? Would you know, sir? <laughs> well, uh... 50,000. <laughs> Well, I think you can start with buying seeds, the, uh, seeds that you can grow at your backyard, okay? Seeds which can grow at, uh, at your backyard and, you know, make a living out of it. So because, how, uh, yeah. It's hard to have, uh, think of the times, okay? Uh, think of the times, okay? Uh, a lot of things will be happening virtually, you know? And one thing, you know, one thing I, I thought about last night is, you know, food will become very important. So businesses involved in food, you know, yes. people will be attending at, at the house and you know, people will not see what they are eating. So, you, you know, when the meeting is so stressful, they, they, they will eat a lot, okay? So food will be there. And just think about this. Things you can put at your background, okay? Maybe these things will be sellable in the near future. So if you ask me about agriculture, why don't you try investing your 50,000 in seeds that will grow ornamental plants and start making a living out of it, you know? And that will be good background, okay, that people will say, what's that? And might get interested about it, okay. Okay, from another- That was my idea last night, okay? So whoever, to, whoever among you makes a living, you know, just credit me, Joe, okay? Okay, 
Yes. So there's another question from an anonymous attendee. How much money do we need to start for an investment for a beginner, sir? Okay. Hmm. For a beginner. Yes, sir. I don't think we have an amount. Okay. Uh, if you're a beginner, all that I'm requesting is that you start saving in a bank whatever amount it is, and work slowly in increasing it. When you feel comfortable about moving away from a bank and placing it in government securities, uh, you call me. But for a beginner, start with putting it in a bank, even though the interest rates are quite low. Okay, there's another question here. Is it prudent to buy from the stock market at this time, considering prevailing low price of stocks from uh, Miss Mona Linda Cadiz. Okay. Okay. I have to be honest with you. I really have to be honest with you. During the lockdown period, I ventured into the stock market. Okay. Because uh, after the president declared uh, a quarantine period, the prices at the stock market uh, nosedive. Okay, and I took the risk. Okay, at that time I was a risk taker, and I went at that point in time, wherein the prices uh, uh, decreased, and slowly I sold it at the gain. Is now the right time to enter into the stock market? It really depends on your uh, risk, uh, whether you're risk averse or risk taker. If you if you demand. An honest answer from me, you can, but study well. If you still want to push this question, may I suggest that you stick with what we call as blue chip companies. What are blue chip companies? These are the companies that you see around and you actually use. So, Ms. Cadiz, may I suggest that you take a look <laughs> at the back page of the business uh, newspaper, take a look at the companies listed in that portion. Think about the popularity of these firms during these days. Just in case you want to know, one of the popular stocks that are being traded right now at the Philippine stock market is a grocery store. That's because this grocery store did not stop its operations during the lockdown. This grocery store was not inside the mall that was closed, okay? And that is why people are quite interested with it. Whether this grocery store stock has gone up to unbelievable levels or not is for you to decide. But I'm just saying is always study first before you venture into the stock market. Personally, I think there are some stocks there which deserve some attention. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, at, what advice can you give from Mr. Hector Brian Grammer? What advice can you give to those people without bank accounts? Uh, for example, the farmers, especially those who have problems to apply due to uh, requirements such as valid IDs, etc. Okay. Well, my advice, because if cash is there uh, within your premises, the temptation to use it is quite high. Okay. So if you find it difficult to place it in a bank account, my advice is have that discipline of differentiating what is essential versus what is not before parting with your money before parting with your hard-earned money. And don't be tempted when people approach you and offer you unbelievable returns. Because every return has its own risk. Okay, thank you for that very sound advice. Uh, can you also encourage everybody to get insurance because somehow our present savings might not be enough? Okay. Uh, uh, Please take note that insurance is another thing. It covers you for emergencies. It covers you for retirement. 
Uh, is, is having a medical insurance wise? My answer is yes. And I speak from experience. Uh, I, I told you earlier that there was a year wherein my, my bladder was removed and it was a very, very expensive procedure. The, the insurance provider took care of it, okay? But that thing is not for investment. It's there to protect us during times of uh, emergencies. Having a life insurance is uh, basically for your retirement and a good investment. Uh, what do you call this? In good investment product as well. But let me just warn you. Some of these insurance companies, you know, attach what they call riders to their insurance products. Always ask your insurance uh, representative what are the riders for, because you know you can take that away if totally unnecessary, and just stick with the main product, and your premium will go down. Some of them have this tendency of attaching a lot of features which may not be relevant to you. So before you accept or before you take an insurance policy, demand that the insurance representative sit down with you to answer all their questions. Okay, this one uh, is a... Give one more. Give one more and deal with reputable uh, insurance companies. Okay, so in the Philippines, we have heard of some insurance companies which were not able to deliver on their uh, policy orders. Okay. So we have to be very careful. Yes, sir. Uh, as much as I want to collect my receivables, you know, the, your 11 commandment, uh, <laughs> as soon as possible, I really find it hard to do so because I'm afraid that it might stain my relationship with my friends. How do you effectively collect your receivables from friends and family members? Okay. Well, I think before you part with your money, your agreement with your friends should be clear. Okay, like when will they pay it? Okay, that should be clear. Another, uh, I, I don't think it's a difficult thing to do, but maybe before you part your money and give it to your friend, you tell your friend, you know, this is hard earned money on my part. Okay, I'm willing to, uh, what do you call this, to lend this to you in the meantime, but the least that you can do is to give it back to me at a certain period of time. Okay. Uh, it should be time bound. <laughs> that's correct. Okay, just don't give it and say, you know, pay uh, uh, as you can. No, don't. Pay when able. Don't give that, them uh, an excuse to uh, delay or to ignore you. Okay. Yes, that's the reality. <laughs> Is it safe, sir, to invest in money, to invest money in cooperatives? Uh, the answer is, uh, it depends on the cooperative, okay? Uh, can I just go a little bit technical? It, it, it depends on the governance of that cooperative, okay? okay? Uh, it depends on who's running the show in the, of the cooperative. The concept itself is okay. Yes. But take a look at who's running the show. Because if the management of that cooperative are scrupulous people, then uh, your money will go down the drain. So it depends on who's running the show, okay? And one, one idea to determine whether that cooperative is good or that is to, def, uh, to demand, you know, the balance sheet that I talked about earlier, the income state. Okay, so one last question, sir, from Mr. Carlo Caceres. Given the uncertainty brought about, brought about by this pandemic, do you think it's the best time to save and wait to invest until the economy or wait to invest until the economy becomes favorable? Okay, once again, we are facing uncertain times and it is very important to manage your cash flow, okay? It's very important to have enough cash uh, with you these days and to think very, very closely when you try to part with your money. Now, more than ever, uh, there's a need of focusing on the essentials or the needs rather than a want. I know some of you might not like this, but now is not the time to buy a new phone, <laughs> okay? Unless it's used for business. Now might not be the time to buy that uh, newly released sneakers, okay? Now is not the time to conduct parties, okay? Focus on 
uh, essentials or what is really needed, especially because there is a threat of a job loss, there is a threat of the, what do you call this, of the uh, uh, economy further deteriorating. So what matters during these times is cash flow. Is now the right time to invest? My answer is yes, okay? But you have to study it carefully, okay? And as long as you have excess cash, which you do not need right away. But if the cash that you have right now is just sufficient for your day-to-day -day lives, now is the time, now is not the time to look for, to invest in the stock market. Thank you very much. Okay, one last question, sir. Uh, what is the best and realistic investment for a retiree? Well, I assume most of the retirees have their pensions, okay? One thing. To the person who asked that question, if you're a retiree, and you have a sufficient amount of cash and you're very comfortable with it, may I suggest that you enjoy it, <laughs> okay? But if you want to leave some for your children or grandchildren, make sure that it's over and above what you need, okay, uh, for your daily uh, life. But should you insist, I suggest government security. But okay. my strong message is if it's a comfortable amount of money, I think you deserve to enjoy it. Enjoy. That's the word. Okay, so. Uh, it. We worked so hard for it for a long time. I think now is the time to uh, enjoy it. Yes. Um, we agree. We agree with you. We still have a lot of questions lined up, but I'm also mindful of the time. We've gone over time for this webinar. Rest assured that for those of you who sent in your questions, we will send them to uh, Didi Joe and um, he will find time to answer your questions. But before we end this webinar, may I ask Didi Joe for some closing or takeaway message? Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you all for staying with me for about an hour and 30 minutes. You know, my main message for this one hour seminar, what matters at the end of the day, after our relationship with our creator and our relationship with friends and relatives is to watch cash flow. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Once again, I'm Joe and I'm from Sirka. Maraming salamat. Oh, once again, also, thank you, uh, Didi Joe. Uh, on behalf of our director, uh, Dr. Glenn Gregorio, we would like to express our sincere gratitude uh, to you for taking time to join us today. Uh, thank you also for your presentation, which significantly increased our understanding of the importance of money, why it matters. So we hope that through this webinar, uh, we were able to help our viewers manage your finances wisely and get back on the road towards uh, financial stability or security or financial freedom. Managing our finances wisely will bring us peace and happiness. I, I know Didi Joe would agree with me. Uh, money is a tool that can enrich our lives. And if we use it responsibly, it can bless our lives, bless our family and the lives of other uh, families and friends around us. So that ends our webinar this morning. But before we close, please let us know what you think about this webinar by clicking on a quick feedback form, which will take you just a minute to complete in the Circa Facebook page. It's now being shown on your screen. Please take a screenshot. Um, and then um, you will be redirected to the feedback form before you leave the webinar room. Your feedback is important to us to help us improve uh, the webinar. For those who, of you who wish to receive an e-certificate, that, that link that is shown on your screen will also direct you to uh, the form, uh, to, to the form for the e-certificates. And um, please note that we will only accommodate requests for e-certificates within 24 hours after the end of this webinar session. We would also like to inform everyone that we issue more than 100 certificates after each webinar. So kindly wait 
for your e-certificate to be issued within 10 working days. So I repeat, kindly wait for your certificate to be issued within 10 working days. Thank you for your understanding and patience. So please do join us again for our next online conversation next week, July 22nd at 10 a.m., where we have invited speakers from various financial institutions to share with us some agribusiness models for increased productivity and income. So let us help one another get through this COVID-19 pandemic. We hope that as we go along, we will be able to create a community of better, bigger, and smarter farmers and farming families. This is Kim Bantayan of Circa. Stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone.